Hi guys, this is Satya from Dotcom, and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest Android 15 GSI ROM on your Android phone. So as of now, do keep in mind that this is just an initial build because the Android 15 build has just been released a few days back. So this is an AOSP build and not a build something along the lines of Evolution X of Pixel OS. So you will not get many features in this ROM. It's just a pure stock AOSP ROM with just the basic features and it's mostly used for testing purpose. With that said, I'll still show you how to flash the ROM. You might come across a few bugs and issues in this ROM as well because it's mostly for debugging purpose and it's the initial release. Along with that, there exists two developers who have made this Android 15 GSI ROM and uh, both of them are quite popular in this domain. One is the Triple Dwight Builders and the next one is the Ponces. I'll show you how to install any one of these two. The flashing steps are the same. So with that said, please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First and foremost, you will have to install Android SDK platform tools. This is the official AD binary given by Google and is required for ADB command. So get it from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You may extract them anywhere you want. In my case, I've done the extraction in C drive. And as you could see, these are the files of platform tools. Once that is done, you will now have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required for ADB command. Whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's try enable both these toggles. For that, go to the settings menu. Then go to about phone and tap on OS version or build number seven times. You will get a prompt that you are now a developer. Now go to settings, about phone or additional settings, system, and you should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. If you are using a Xiaomi phone, you will get a warning sign. You will then have to wait for 10 seconds. And after that, tap on OK or allow. And with this, debugging is now enabled. Once that is done, let's now verify the same. So go to the address bar of platform tools folder, type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch command prompt inside platform tools. Now type in ADB devices and make sure that you're getting an ID. If you're not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official USB cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB fixes and make sure that you're getting an ID. Once you're getting this ID, your next course of action is to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do note that unlocking will wipe off all the data and then it will or it might nullify the warranty as well. If that's well and good, you could refer to a guide and the video and get this job done. In short, you just have to boot your phone to fast boot mode and then use the fast boot flashing unlock command. You will then get a prompt on your phone. So use the volume key to highlight, unlock the bootloader and press the power key to confirm. On Xiaomi phones, you will have to use the Mi Unlock tool to get this job done. Once you have unlocked the bootloader, make sure to re-enable USB debugging on your phone once again. Once that is done, you will now get hold of the desired GSI ROM from here. So as of now, I'm using the Ponces build because the Triple Dwight is initial and it has not been tested, but the Ponces has at least been tested. If you are watching this video and trying the flashing process a couple of weeks later then make sure to verify the current state for example as of now in the table wide as you could see it's just a blind build and not even tested so it's for the technical and highly advanced user in case of Ponce it's also a pre-release but at least it's somewhat not a blind test so with that said as of now we will be flashing the Ponce's build and regarding which GSI to download you may install the travel info app on your device from play store and after that, the AB is for the du dual slot and system as root. So most of the Android for nowadays are system as root. So you may use the AB build. Then if you want the GS build, you may use the GS variant or else use the vanilla build. And the most important thing is VNDK Lite. So inside the travel info app, you should see a section named as, let me show you, a linker namespace isolation. So if it's showing as VNDK is not in light mode, then you will have to download the ROM, which is not VNDK. So in my case, VNDK is not in light mode. So I could either download the first ROM or the third ROM, depending on GFs or vanilla. If in your case, the VNDK is in light mode, then you could download the VNDK, the second one or the fourth one. So uh, as of now, I got hold of the first ROM because I want the GFs as well. So get hold of the ROM zip file. And once you have got the ROM file, let me show you. You will now have to extract the ROM file as well. So let's do that as well. And it should be somewhat here itself. Just give me a second and let me access it. 
so you will now have to extract this rom file as well for that you could use the 7zip software then right click on it and select show more option 7zip extract to AOSP and the GSI system image file will now be extracted onto your PC it should take just a few seconds once the extraction is complete copy the IMG file from the folder and transfer the file inside the platform tools directory so let's do that as well which should take just a few seconds and once that is done you will now have to get hold of the VB meta file for your phone as well and for that first and foremost you will have to download the stock firmware for your phone make sure to download the same firmware which is currently installed onto your phone you may verify the same from the build number or OS version on your phone as you could see over here in my case it's 1090 UMRI XM so it should be something along a similar line in case of Xiaomi and somewhat different for all the other phone but it should be same for the build number as correspondingly so in case of Xiaomi you have to download the fastboot rom and then extract the fastboot rom tgz for folder via 7zip this will give you a tar folder again extract the tar folder and you will get the following folder go inside this folder as you could see it's a 1090 um rin xm the same version go there then go inside the images folder and get hold of the vb meta file this is for the Xiaomi which i am talking about then for the let's say pixel phones the firmware you will have to download is the entire factory image then simply extract the entire factory image it will be in a zip format so just extract the factory image file and then go to the images folder and you will have to then extract the image folder from here and then get the VB meta file this is the file and transfer it inside platform tools directory then in case of oneplus and realme oppo it's the zip format but upon extraction you will get a payload bin file so you have to extract the payload bin via fastboot enhance so launch the fastboot enhance tool i will give a link for this tool in the video description then go to payload dumper click on browse choose the payload bin file from the firmware click on open then go to partition check mark allow incremental now select the vb meta file from here so let me have a look at that file it should be somewhat here itself this is the file so select the vb meta file onto your from this tool just give me a second select the file check mark allow incremental click on extract image choose the location and click ok and as you could see we have now got a vb meta file on our desktop let me show you this is the file so make sure to extract the firmware file and from there get hold of the vb meta file and transfer the file inside platform tools so now we have both the vb meta and the gsi rom for the ease of convenience let's rename the rom file to something shorter so let's rename it to gsi and the complete name becomes gsi.img once that is done you will now have to rename or rather boot your phone to the fastboot mode for that simply type in adb reboot bootloader and hit enter and your phone should now reboot into fastboot mode it should take just a few seconds once it's in the fastboot mode you will now have to type in fastboot devices and make sure that you are getting a serial id so hit enter and as you could see we are getting an id if you are not getting any id then you will have to install fastboot drivers on your pc we have made a separate guide and a video on the same you could refer to our guide and install the fastboot drivers once you have installed the drivers right click on the windows icon or use the windows x shortcut keys and choose device manager then expand the android phone section and make sure that your phone is being shown as android bootloader interface so this as well as the serial id next to fastboot signify that your pc is able to read the phone in fastboot mode and we are now good to go ahead so now you will have to first and foremost disable the verification check for that you just have to flash the vb meta file so copy the entire command and just simply paste it in the cmd window and hit enter and the file has been flashed and the verification check is complete now you will have to boot your phone to the fastboot d mode so type in fastboot reboot fastboot and your phone should now reboot into the fastboot d mode do know that the fastboot d screen might vary depending on the phone that you are using in the screenshot you could see it's for the pixel phone and in the video i'm using a Xiaomi phone so the fastboot d screen will be different for each of these phones once your phone is in the fastboot d mode you will now have to remove the product a partition so as to make space for the gsi rom so copy this command and paste it in the cmd window and the product a partition has been removed finally we will now flash the gsi rom onto our phone so type in fastboot flash partition name which is system and file name which is gsi.img and hit enter and the flashing will now start and it could take up to a, a couple of minutes the gsi rom will be broken down into sub smaller system partition as you could see in this case we are, are having around 15 smaller GSI 
सब सिस्टम पार्टीशन फाइल एंड ईच ऑफ दिस फाइल विल नॉट बी फ्लैश इंडिविजुअली एंड दी ओवरऑल टाइम इट शुड टेक इज ओनली अराउंड अ कपल ऑफ मिनट्स सो एज यू कुड सी द फाइल्स हैविंग फ्लैश सो लेट्स जस्ट वेट फॉर द फ्लैशिंग टू बी कम्प्लीट सो गाइज द फ्लैशिंग इज जस्ट अबाउट टू गेट कम्प्लीट एंड द एंटायर प्रोसेस टुक ओनली अराउंड अ कपल ऑफ मिनट्स एज आई टोल्ड इनिशियली वंस द फ्लैशिंग हैज बिन डन यू विल नाउ हैव टू डू अ फॉर्मेट डेटा सो टाइप इन फास्ट बूट स्पेस डैश डब्ल्यू एंड हिट एंटर एंड ऑल दी डेटा ऑन आर फोन हैज बिन रिमूव यू मै नाउ रिबूट योर फोन टू द ओ एस सो टाइप इन फास्ट बूट रिबूट एंड योर फोन शुड नॉट रिबूट टू द न्यूली फ्लैश ओ एस डू नो दैट द फर्स्ट बूट अपल टेक अप सम एडिशनल टाइम दैट इज कम्प्लीटली नॉर्मल एंड नथिंग टू वरी अबाउट मोर ओवर लेट्स वेट फॉर द बूट एनिमेशन और एटलीस्ट द बूट लोगो टू अपियर इधर ऑफ विच विल सिग्निफाई दैट द फ्लैशिंग हैज बिन डन सक्सेसफुली and you might have to wait for a few more seconds because this is the first time boot up and the rom is being set up in the background so let's give it a few more seconds and as you could see this is the boot animation which should now appear in a matter of few seconds let's very wait and verify the same as well and even if the phone gets stuck in the this white screen it's not a cause of any concern give it a few more seconds and you should and you should then see the boot logo or the boot animation So as you could see, we are we now got the Android logo and our phone is now booted to the OS. So if you are facing any display issue, I'll show you how to fix that as well. As of now, just quickly skip the setup screen and then I'll show you how to fix this display issue. For now, you must set up the phone offline to rectify the rest of the issue. Or if the display is working well and good, you could backup restore all the apps right now itself. In my case, I'm facing a few display issue. So I'm skipping the initial setup process, and with this, we are now inside the OS, the latest Android 15 build, and this is the QS tiles. First off, let's go to the settings menu, PHS Trouble Settings, then go to Customization Features, or let's go back a feature, Miscellaneous Features, and from here go to Force FPS, and choose 1080 into 2400 at a rate of 90 FPS. Let me show you once again. Choose this option. Wait for a few seconds, and now you will not face any issue whatsoever. This is the fix for display issue. I made a separate guide on the same as well. You can refer to my guide and get the job done. So now that we have fixed the issue, let's have a look at the ROM features. So first off, these are the PHS trouble settings for Android 15 ROM. A few Qualcomm features for the audio policy, camera profiles. Then the Xiaomi for my phone is Xiaomi. It will be vary depending on your phone. This is the double tap to wake. Then a few miscellaneous tweaks. All of these are advanced level tweaks, so only use them if you know what you are doing. You may enable the dynamic FPS, which will automatically adjust the refresh rate depending on the content being used in the phone. Then if you have carried out any UI UX tweak, you may tap on this to restart the system UI. And you may also enable the camera to API if the G cam is not working along the expected lines. Then these are few 5G and 4G. Tweaks and apart from that, debugging sensors are also there, and a few IMS. This is mostly required if the 4G LTE or 5G network are not working. Then you may enable the, these toggles, and the calling feature will work along the expected lines. Okay, we also have quite a few audio effects. So the these are by Dolby, MI Sound, Qualcomm, and the AOSP and XP software. So as of now, I am not aware of the. Rather, I am not aware of the. and xp software but apart from that the dolby mi sound and qualcomm these are all quite a popular name and likewise the aosp project is also quite popular the best one in my knowledge is the dolby laboratories but the change the taste might vary for each of the users so you may try it out each of the toggle and then see which one works for you best then you will have to restart the media app for the changes to take place then you may update the gsi rom from here itself apart from that let's access the wallpaper and style section so as of now it's not working along the expected line this was quite expected because this is the extremely initial build and as i have told you there might be a few issues and bugs so this section is not working for now but in the subsequent re release this should work without any issue then in the display we may enable the dark theme so this is working and apart from that are a few basic tweaks that you get across all the usp roms And if you access the about device, Android 15, as you could see, this it's the Android 15 build number, and this is the Easter egg for Android 15. So guys, there is just one thing left. I would would want to share one more 
Android 15 feature which is there in this ROM. So as you might be aware, you could now hide the apps from the app drawer in the Android 15 build. Simply long press on the anywhere on the home screen, select home settings and from here select hidden and protected apps and now simply tap on the eye icon next to the app that you want to hide and the app will be hidden from the apps from the home screen as well as the app drawer. So let's hide the Google app. Let me show you and the app should now be hidden and as you could see it's no longer there on the apps on the app drawer. Likewise you may hide any apps of your choice. Just make sure that you have a lock screen as well otherwise it will defeat the entire purpose of this feature. You may set up any lock screen fingerprint or pin pattern password but any one of them should be there otherwise anyone could access this page and unhide this app as you could see as I have done just now. So make sure to keep a pattern pin yeah. password and apart, and apart from that there is not much changes because it's a pure stock AOSP build with not much of the features. In fact even when the build gets stable you will not see the addition of any new features as opposed to CR Droid or Evolution X. The AOSP ROM is just the clean stock UI experience and you will get only the basic Google app packages if you apply the G apps or the vanilla build without any Google apps as such. But as of now since this is the initial first build and Android 15 has just been released there are a few bugs and issues but over the due course of time these issues will surely be rectified. You could simply download the update, update from this section either from the PHS Treble app or from the system update app both will work or if you want to take a more lengthier approach simply download the latest build from here and flash it via fastboot though that is not required because it will only make the matter worse and it will require more time and effort so simply download and install the update from here and all the underlying issues will be fixed which are now there on your phone and guys on that note i round off this video if you have any queries with regard to any of the steps do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching